All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining today. Um, as Rob said, instead of the regular Zoom open forum, we are doing um, a special training today on the supplemental savings plan and specifically automatic enrollment that um, we haven't we have let you guys know already is going to be starting um, on January 1st, 20. 23. So it's coming up um, and we wanted to give you the information. I'm Shiloh Tubbs. I'm the Deferred Compensation Manager here at TRS. Today we do have a really, really packed agenda. Um, it is, we have a lot <laughs> to cover, um, but I think that um, hopefully this will help cover um, where we've come from, where we are, and where we're going. Um, when I tried to think of how to present the automatic enrollment, I kind of went the whole who, what, when, where concept came to me. And so that's how we're gonna cover that. Um, I am gonna show you the process flow, both current and how it's changing a little bit for those that are new to TRS um, after on or after 1-1 one, one of 23. Um, for those that are involved in payroll and reporting, I'm gonna show you um, a deferrals report and what you need to look for, because um, that's how you're gonna know who's enrolled. Um, a very high level reporting and payments. We do have another reporting out there, but I do um, have links to that those resources um, in this presentation, so you don't have to go search. And then um, just let you guys know what's next and then the important resources. So it, it'll take a good amount of time, but we're going to um, try to open it up for questions at the end. Um, but as uh, Rob said, right now the chat box is disabled. So if you've been around, um, you may remember that the supplemental savings plan um, first came about um, in concept in 2018. That's when a public act required that TRS offer a defined contribution plan. Um, to be able to do that in 2019, um, TRS uh, uh, went out for bid and got a defined contribution consultant, a plan record keeper, and then um, the Deferred Compensation Plan Committee became a standing committee of the TRS board. Um, in August 2021, before we actually launched, um, another public act was passed um, that required all employers to offer the plan and for TRS to auto-enroll new members. So I have links to the acts if you want the, the details of them, but really at a high level, that's what was what happened. Um, at the same time, we were implementing Gemini um, per pay period reporting um, in September 2021 that launched. Um, and then we were able to launch uh, the, the SSP in 2022. People were able to um, enroll in January of 22, and we started um, taking deferrals in March for anyone that had, had enrolled prior to March 1st. And then... Um, the next phase of automatic enrollment is this um, auto, or sorry, the next phase of the SSP is this automatic enrollment of new TRS members, which will begin um, January 1st. So at a very high level, the supplemental savings plan is a 457B retirement plan. Um, here's some information that we've shared a lot of times, but the main point is that it's, it's designed to supplement a member's pension, not replace it. Um, and we set it up to try to be of the most benefit to the members. Um, the eligibility and participation is active TRS members that are full-time or part-time are eligible, but only if the employer has formally adopted the SSP. So you may remember we required all employers to adopt by September 30th of 2022. Um, we do have a few stragglers that we believe have probably adopted um, or we know they've adopted, but we don't have their paperwork. So if you haven't adopted yet, or if you haven't gotten a, your paperwork, you need to do that right away so that we can implement this correctly. Um, and just a note that substitute part-time non-contractually, non-contractual extra duty only um, or retired or inactive members are ineligible for the SSP. So the, the other thing about the SSP is that there can be employee contributions. Um, the members um, can contribute um, from their paycheck on a pre-tax or after-tax basis. 
Um, and that determines the contribution category for Gemini reporting. And that's how the money flows over to their Boya account. Um, and then the employer contributions can be either discretionary matching, which means whatever it's based on the amount the employer and the employee is contributing, or it can be a non-elective. So say you just have a seed $500 a year, $100 a year that you as an employer contribute to their account. It can be either or both. Um, we do need to know that and it's on the participation agreement. So if you do um, make a change to that um, via collective bargaining or even on a one-off um, contract term, then we do need for you to update your participation agreement to indicate that you're going to have employer contributions. That's a 457B rule. Um, if we don't see that and we see an employer contribution, we're going to reach out to you. Um, and then the other thing to know is that an employer can make a contribution to the um, SSP, even if an employee is not participating. So that $500 or $100, that non-electric contribution um, does not require participation in the SSP. It, it does require them to be eligible for it, though. So... Why you are all here today is um, as an employer. And so we thought it was really important to you. So we know what we do as CRS, but what we need you to do as the employer, um, we really need you to ac accurately report active members' employment information. Um, and you do that via your defined benefit reporting. And that's part of the reason we did move to the um, pay period reporting is to have this information in real time or closer to rather than annually. Um, so we need you to stay current with the DB reporting and do it accurately because the eligibility for the SSP is determined by, for, by DB reporting. So for example, we have some new teachers that wanted to enroll in the SSP, but their employer had not reported them. Until they're reported, we don't know they're there. Even if they had previously worked until they're reported as active with you and eligible with you, we can't let them enroll. We don't, we don't have them as eligible. The other thing is if they terminate, so if they're participating and have contributed money, one of the benefits of a 457B is regardless of age, if you have a severance of employment, you are able to access that money um, as a it's a distribution op option but only if we know that you term, the employee was terminated. So it is really important for you to do the um, DB reporting accurately. We have implemented some edits um, if what you're doing is going to terminate um, a member's um, SSP. There is an, a relatively new edit called its ER4061. Um, so we're trying to minimize any um, impact on a member just based on incorrect reporting, but I, I did want to make sure it's clear to you guys. The other thing is we tell you pretty much immediately when someone makes an election, um, although they're not effective till the first of the following month um, for um, new enrollments or changes, um, but we need you to timely um, and accurately process those deferrals on payroll and report them via Gemini. That's how they get to Voya. <laughs> so um, I, I put here part of um, the code that says all employers must comply with the reporting and administrative functions. And so we are defining what those are, and you should not make up your own separate forms, opt in, opt out. We have established the process, and that's what you need to follow as an employer. And then we need you to report them as soon as administratively possible after being withheld from the employee's paycheck. Um, that's in accordance with 457B and plan rules. And then the other thing that we need from you is to monitor the 457Bs that you maintain. So the SSP is one that is being offered through you as an employer, but we also know there are other 457Bs that uh, um, some of our our employers are offering as well, which is totally fine. Um, but the limits do have to be coordinated. So the limit, the IRS limits per year have to consider all 457Bs that that employee is enrolled in with you. Um, so 
um, we're providing you the information. We have a year-to-date report in Gemini, um, but we don't know about the other 457B, so you, you need to monitor those limits. We have um, the contribution rates and earnings. Um, we have the limits up on that page, and we do have both 2022 and 2023. They were increased quite a bit for 2023, and we already have had some people inquire about how to get the most out of um, their deferrals for next year, which is exciting. So um, we we do plan to do a communication just to let people know the new limits and to go out and make any election changes that they might have for 2023. Oh, and one other point, 403B contributions do not impact 457B contributions. So they can max out both of those. But if it's a 457B, those have to coordinate. So um, automatic enrollment will start January 1st, 2023. And I have the, the language from the code here, um, just kind of more as a reference. I'm not going to read it. But as we were setting up automatic enrollment in compliance with the law, we really use this as a blueprint. Um, so the, why are we doing 3%? It's because it says, <laughs> why are we doing free tax? Um, the 30 days um, that we're going to cover, um, the 90 days to be able to get the money back if they have contributions that they would they want back. So we use this as a blueprint, understanding that we're set up a little bit unique because uh, it's a multiple employer plan, but we did use this as the blueprint to comply with state law. And then also the consideration of how could we give the employees the most time and compliance with law to make sure they they have access to information and time to make the choices that they may want to make. So like I said, I, the way I kind of started thinking about how to share this with you guys was the who, what, where. So the who is the biggest question I think we get, um, who will be automatically enrolled? And it, ha it is an employee that is first employed in a TRS covered position on or after January 1 of 2023. So they have to be a full-time or part-time contractual employee they have to be first employed on or after January 1st of 2023, and they have to be employed by an SSP P participating employer. So all three of those things have to be true for a person to be identified as eligible for automatic enrollment. So conversely, what that means is who will not be <laughs> automatically enrolled is any TRS member <laughs> that is in a TRS covered position prior to January 1st. So any of your TRS employees right now will not be automatically enrolled. Um, your substitutes or part-time only um, employees will not be. Um, if if the, you have a new hire that you're hiring after January 1 of 2023, but you know they were previously in a TRS covered position, they're not gonna be automatically enrolled. And then, um, if you have not adopted the SSP, we can't automatically enroll them. <laughs> but just to know, we're trying to do this fairly and in and, and compliance with the law. So we do need your paperwork if you have adopted or we need you to adopt if you haven't um, to make sure that we do have all of the TRS members as required by law. So what does it mean to be automatically enrolled? Um, and what that means is 3% of the employee's pre-tax compensation will be withheld and deposited into their SSP account each pay period. If they're automatically enrolled, those contributions will be invested in the plan's designated default investment option, which is the target date retirement fund closest to the employee's expected retirement date at age 65 based on, based on, based on their birth date. So if someone becomes automatically enrolled, it's 3% if their pre-tax compensation and they're going to go into the target date fund, which is that that's the default fund um, for our plan. So we've had a lot of questions and discussions about what should be included and excluded from an employee's pre-tax compensation if they're at automatically enrolled or if they choose to enroll it as a percentage of their compensation, which is gonna be an option after January 1st also. 
And so the the thing for that I think causes confusion a little bit is that it's not the same as TRS earnings. It's not even related to TRS earnings, <laughs> um, but it should generally be the same as any other 457B or 403B um, plan you offer because it's really, it's an IRS defined um, term, I guess. So we have developed a summary of compensation um, document. I've linked it three, page, three times on this page, but we have it out on our website and on the SSP employer page. I'm going to see if this is going to come up for me. Yeah. And so here is what we have as the summary of compensation. And really the, the general definition is that over on the left. Um, and it's, you know, basically the their earnings <laughs> for work um, that they do for you. Um, but also you do have to add in um, anything that's, that's covered by section 125, 132, 401k, 403b, or 457b. And then there's a couple of other things here too. The includes and excludes columns here are really meant just to be um, examples. So it's not comprehensive. You may have a benefit that doesn't fit in here, but it's similar to um, one of these other things. And so you can definitely reach out to us, but I just want you to know if you already have another 403B plan or 457B plan, if it's not contrary to this, then I would keep that definition and use that same um, calculation um, if they're able to enroll as a percentage of compensation. Okay. Sorry, I had to get my slides back up. Okay. So I just, that that is out there. We will probably send out another email and any of the clarifications that we have had a couple questions, um, we will try to add an FAQ out on the employer site as well. So that's what automatic enrollment is. So when will this happen? So um, we're saying January 1st, um, any employees hired on or after January 1st. But what that really means is when you def when you report a new employee for the defined benefit plan in Gemini, so typically that's at, at the end of a, their first pay period, right when they get their first paycheck, um, that is when we know about them. We don't know about them before, and Voya definitely doesn't know about them before that. So when you report them, um, our system will determine based on what you report whether they're eligible for the SSP, and if they are, they'll go to Voya. And then their eligibility for automatic enrollment will be determined. And again, that's based on that. Are they brand new <laughs> to TRS um, on or after January 1 of, one, of 2023? So about seven to 10 days after that, they're going to get PIN information in one envelope. And then they're going to get a separate packet that tells them you're um, eligible for automatic enrollment unless you do anything by the uh, this automatic enrollment effective date. Um, then you're going to be enrolled at 3% of pre-tax compensation in this target date fund. They'll also get um, an automatic enrollment, um, and sorry, automatic enrollment guide. And it's very similar to what we have sent out to any of the people that were eligible to enroll since we've launched the SSP, but it is very specific for those people that are eligible for automatic enrollment um, what that they are identified for automatic enrollment, and here's what they can do. So it's a separate guide. That's the only one that we're doing that is separate. Everything else is being updated to include automatic enrollment, but we want the people that are going to go through that process to know for sure that they were identified for this, and this is what their options are. If they don't do anything, they'll, um, after that, they'll receive a reminder notice that says, if you don't do anything, <laughs> you're going to be enrolled at 3% of pre-tax compensation and invested in the target date fund. So that automatic enrollment effective date, we can't really tell you what that is because it's based on when you report people for DB. So it's not their first day of employment because we don't know about them on that day. Um, and so it is after you report them, 
in general, it's a it's 30 days. So it, it will be at least 30 days from when they're reported in Gemini, but um, it could be a couple calendar days longer if depending on when they're reported, if there's a weekend or holiday, but it's at least 30 days. And um, that's the date when they have to opt out, make an affirmative election, or otherwise they're going to be automatically enrolled in the SSP. So once that date passes, which is on their notice that they get, um, that's when they'd be automatically enrolled if they if they had not done anything else. Once they are automatically enrolled, confirmation will be mailed to their house um, that they're enrolled. And then also that automatic enrollment will be added to the employer's um, deferrals report. So that, that happens like pretty much immediately after that automatic enrollment effective date passes. So, so we're gonna tell you they're enrolled, <laughs> but when do you start taking the money? So if they are automatically enrolled, their contribution effective date is actually going to be the first of the month following that date. So um, just like any other enrollments or changes, um, those do not take effect till, till the first of the month following. So their actual first contribution should be the first pay period on or after that contribution effective date. So hopefully that kind of shows you there, there's 30 days from when they, <laughs> they're reported to us. So it's probably in most cases at least 45 days from their date of employment. And then also their contrib depending when in the month that falls, their contribution effective date is the first of that following month. And so that's when their contributions should start um, the, pay the pay period beginning on or after that date. So where do I see that an employee has been automatically enrolled? Um, so like I said, it's gonna be on the SSP deferrals report. Everything that happens with the SSP will be on the SSP deferrals report including the automatic enrollment. You may remember a couple weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, um, I, I talked about uh, one of the more recent releases. Um, there's now a new column on the automatic, on the SSP deferrals report that says automatic enrollment. And if someone is auto enrolled, it will say yes. Um, that doesn't mean you need to do anything different than what is actually lined out on the SSP deferrals report, but I, we felt like you as an employer might want that information, so we are going to send that to you. And then if you wanted to know that an employee has opted out or was not eligible for automatic enrollment, only the employees that are enrolled are going to show up on your SSP deferrals report. So if they opted out, it won't come over to you. Um, if they if they made a change um, before that automatic enrollment effective date, or if they made an affirmative election, it, it will not say yes, because they were not automatically enrolled. They enrolled of their own. So you won't see that they opted out, but if they were automatically enrolled, you'll see them on your report, and um, it will say yes in that auto-enrolled column. So how can employees that are eligible for automatic enrollment opt out of the SSP or make another election? So just the same as people can enroll now or make changes now, um, they can do all that. They can um, change their enrollment percentage, enroll at a flat dollar amount or opt out on or before their automatic enrollment effective date at TRS's website or via their call center. The, it's the VOIA website or the VOIA call center, not TRS. We can't do that. <laughs> so this website um, for the TRS SSP or the um, SSP service center, which is a VOIA um, member facing number. Um, and you can see here, this is this, this is in general, the screen they're going to see when they log in, if they're eligible for automatic enrollment, it is different than the screen that we see um, if we're just eligible to enroll, um, affirmatively enroll. So you'll see here, I wanna personalize my enrollment. That means I wanna make a change to um, my enrollment percentage, enroll at a flat dollar amount, change my investments. I would select this. I wanna confirm my automatic enrollment. I would, if I'm like, yep, 3%, that's the fund I would pick anyway, just select. And that's not gonna change anything. 
they're going to, it's the dates and everything are going to stay the same. They'll come over as auto enrolled on your um, deferrals report. And then if they don't want to be in the um, SSP, then all they do is they click this, I don't want to save, cancel my scheduled automatic enrollment, and then that opts them out. If they do nothing, they're going to be automatically enrolled um, at 3%. If they personalize or opt out, they're removed from the automatic enrollment process. So that automatic enrollment effective date no longer really matters because they've, they've done something. Um, and so they're removed from that process. And then for sure, if someone is just like, I, I don't want to be automatically enrolled, but I don't want to be out of this forever, they as long as they're eligible for the SSP, they can go back and enroll at a future date. Um, via the same methods. So what if <laughs> my employee is automatically enrolled and doesn't want to be? So if they have been automatically enrolled, like I said, the contributions are the first of the following month. Um, but once those contributions start, they can stop at any time. Or if a deferral has not been taken yet, even if that date has passed, they can go out and cancel. So um, we like we send you the changes um, immediately, although enrollments and um, changes are effective the first of the following month, cancellations are effective as soon as administratively practicable. So if they show up on your report or they get a confirmation email or confirmation notice in the mail, and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm a topped out, just have them go to VOIA and, and they can cancel, just change their elections to zero. And that, and the automatic enrollment doesn't matter at that point. They've made it, they've made an election. But if an employee doesn't want to participate and they have had contributions taken, they do have 90 days from the date of that first contribution um, to get, it's a, it's called a permissible withdrawal they can get those contributions refunded. But please know it's going to be plus or minus any gains or losses or fees. And if there is employer matching, once those contributions are, are gone, they those there's nothing to match, right? So they do forfeit any employer matching. If there's an employer um, non-elective deferral, that will remain in their account. So what they can request is within 90 days of that first contribution, they can request their contributions from their employee paycheck that was based on automatic enrollment. And that's 457B rules, like that's how this works. But the other thing to know is that once you take it on payroll, them getting the money back is on VOIA. There's a process, there's, you know, obviously there's tax implications. That does not go back through payroll. You do not have to update their W-2. Once it's taken from these automatic enrollment contributions are taken, it's a withdrawal through VOIA and VOIA will take care of um, getting the money to the member, applying any taxes, sending them any tax forms. So that was one of the questions that came up quite a bit on the last one. And I just wanna make that clear. Don't just refund it. <laughs> There, there are IRS rules for this and VOIA is responsible for administering them. So they would go to the VOIA website or the VOIA call center. So if you've been on any of my trainings so far um, or looked at any of them, you probably have seen this where this is kind of the cycle. Um, so even though I kind of explained how it worked, um, this is how um, the current process of of um, enrollment for the SSP is. Once you report someone that's an eligible report, um, an eligible employee, we send the file to VOIA. They mail a PIN letter, an enrollment guide. The employee can enroll or make changes. The day, in, in general, the day they do that, we we get a file and, and create a SSP deferrals report for you. So um, <clears throat> their election is on the SSP deferrals report. And then VOIA also mails a confirmation to the employee. Based on their contribution effective date, you should take the money um, on the next 
payroll that begins on or after that effective date. And then you should report that as soon as possible um, via the ACH process. So you do a DC report in Gemini, and that goes directly to their account in VOIA. So that's what's happening now. And this is what will continue to happen for anyone that is not identified as eligible for auto enrollment. So this is not changing. This stays the same. What happens for those in automatic enrollment is there's just a little bit more. <laughs> Um, so if they have an initial, once you report them, if they have initial TRS hire date on or after 1, 123, this is what you'll follow. Otherwise, just look at the one before. They're going to get the PIN letter. They're going to get an auto enrollment guide and an initial notice that tells them they will be automatically enrolled. That includes their effective date. And also it'll include um, their target date fund that they would be invested in if they, um, are automatically enrolled. So then they have the ability to access their account and opt out or make a new deferral election. Um, if they do nothing, then there's a 15 day reminder mailed to them, reminding them of what's gonna happen. And then if they still do nothing by the automatic enrollment effective date, they are automatically enrolled at 3%. Um, and then we will generate a deferrals report for you that shows that 3% and yes, in the auto enrolled column. And then an automatic enrollment confirmation is mailed to the employee. And then you do the same thing. <laughs> um, you deduct the contributions from payroll based on the first pay period on or after that contribution effective date. And you submit it via your um, DC report in Gemini and it's gonna be pulled from your bank account via the ACH process and put directly into their account at FOIA. On that first time that contribution hits VOIA for that member, that's when the 90 days start. So um, that, that's when the 90 days for the permissible withdrawal starts. And then in accordance with the law, um, they have that 90 days to um, receive a refund of amounts deferred, plus or minus any applicable earnings, investment fees, and administrative fees. So what we need from you, <laughs> um, this is the SSP deferrals report, which is kind of more the reporting side, but this is what you need to know. Um, we have quite a few employers that have people enrolled in the SSP right now that are already reporting that this is they're used to this every paycheck, but we do know we have had recent people um, that have recently adopted and, and or employers that maybe um, don't have anyone enrolled yet, but you might, most in most cases, you're gonna have new hires on or after one one of 23 and you are gonna need to know how to do this. So the SSP deferrals report is um, what tells you, bas it's, it's basically, um, the documentation of the salary reduction agreement that takes place at VOIA. So we are sending you the report via the employee, the employer portal, um, and a new comprehensive report generates if your district has a new enrollment, including automatic enrollments, any changes to existing deferrals, you, either the amount to a per, from a flat dollar amount to a percentage or vice versa, or the type pre-tax and Roth. And then it'll also send you any cancellations of existing deferrals. We do send an email when a new SSP deferrals report generates. It comes from that messenger um, email domain or email address. It's sent to reporting and accounting Gemini contacts. And right now the, the subject says your SSP deferrals report has generated successfully. Um, there has been some confusion because it's similar language, I think, to some of the other messages you get. So that will be updated soon, as well as bo the body of the email will be updated to make it clear. There's a change on your SSP deferrals report. You need to pay attention. You need to go look at it, or you need to know to go look for this newest one the next time you process payroll. But I don't want you to just depend on the email because they sometimes go to spam so I do want you to also know to, where to go look for it. Um, and so that is in the employer por portal under TRS reports. So under TRS reports, 
um, you'd pick SSP deferrals. Um, the default is to show the most recent um, in the in one of the upcoming releases. There's actually gonna it's gonna show you the most ten recent up to ten if you've had ten, just so you can see kind of how frequently they generate. Um, or if you wanted to see a previous one, you could change this report run run date range. Um, but in general, you're going to want to refer to the most recent one. And so that's the one that's going to be at the top. Um, and then you'll open that. Just know those deferrals have to be first processed in payroll. And we have worked with the payroll vendors to make sure that's set up. Um, if you use a file for file upload for DB, most likely you can use a file for upload for DC. Um, but you first have to process those in your system. Um, and then report them to us via Gemini. And then note that the contribution amount are per pay period or per pay deferrals. So if it's a flat dollar amount, you need to take that out of each scheduled pay period. Even if you have 26, it's each one. Um, but if it's a percentage deferral, you do need to take it from each paycheck. So including the stipends and extra pay because it's a percentage of compensation, which includes that. And this is what the deferrals report looks like. Um, you'll see the contribution categories are listed out here um, at the top. And then we've identified your member who's enrolled. And then the contribution effective date, remember you're gonna start your deferrals, the first pay period on, that begins on or after that. So for example, in this case, if this person, you know, these, these these people enrolled in um would have had to enroll in January to have a 2 1 of 23 effective date then you'll see these they had changes so their con their current contribution and then their new they changed to a percentage and then in this case they weren't auto enrolled they had they already were in they made an election so there's nothing in that auto enrolled column but then you can see down here and the new deferrals again, you know, they must have enrolled one one of in, in January, but their contribution is not in line with um, the auto enrollment and there's no auto enroll in that column. But this one, this last one here, um, the contribution effective date is three one, which makes sense. They probably were reported in January had a, a automatic enrollment effective date of sometime in February and a 3-1 contribution effective date. Contribution category is that SSP pre-tax, 3%, and that yes, they were automatically enrolled. So this um, should give you some examples of different things you'll see. Um, like I said, those that are already have people enrolled and are reporting the hundreds of employers that are already doing that, it, it shouldn't be different. The percentage really is the biggest difference. Um, so, but there are, we do know there are some that haven't. So I wanted to go through this. Like I said, um, this is not really a reporting session, but we have done um, reporter reporting training and we have that out um, on the website. So here are quite a few resources for you. Um, just a reminder, you can submit a D, one DB report and one DC report on the same day. Um, they don't impact each other. Um, in the future, you may be able to report more than one, but right now you can do one of each. Um, we do recommend uploading a separate file for SSP deferrals. I'm not aware of any problems if, or if anyone is currently submitting one file, but um, we think it's a little cleaner if you do the two separate files. We have report that we have um, the training. We have step-by-step -step processes on the file upload and the replication process. You'll see this screen here. I just wanted you to see if you've been reporting defined benefit and you're like, I have no idea where I would even go to report defined contribution. It's right underneath it. <laughs> um, your default is gonna be whatever way you submit your DB report. So if you do file upload for DB, that's how your default is gonna be set up for DC reporting. But um, you can call employer services and they can change your reporting method for um, DC. If, if you have a vendor that creates a file, I don't know 
why you wouldn't just want to try to use it. Um, we're not aware of any problems with the file formats um, from the vendors, but because there's quite a few fewer people <laughs> enrolled in the SSP, we, we have had people start with replication. So um, your default is going to be whatever you're doing for DB, but you can change it. And then in the future, if you need to change it again, you can contact um, employer services and they can change it. Um, it is handled the same, um, really the step, but the step walker thing, it, it, it works the same way. Um, there are similar load edits, but fewer reporting edits. So we really want, if you took the money on page payroll, the person's enrolled and it's the right kind, we want to get it to VOIA right away so that it's invested. Um, and what we're looking at is the contribution effective date and the contribution category those are the edits that are in place um, in general. So if you're wondering why you're getting at something, those are probably the things to look at, your pay period and, how, and the contribution category. And then the SSP deferrals are withdrawn from your account on, on file in Gemini via ACH poll. It works really the same as um, the TRS contributions or this contributions. But um, it is a different account that's pulling them. And so we need you to make sure that you authorize ACH from um, the SSP. And so I've included this company, ACH company ID. Um, please, if you haven't already, please provide that to your financial institution because otherwise the payment will reject and then we'll have to contact you and have you wire the money. Um, so as you, if you haven't already done this, as you set it up, your first deferral, make sure your bank has that. And then this is an example. I'm going to try to go pretty quick so that we have time for questions. Um, and I just, it's just meant to show you really <laughs> how much time is to track, even though we're saying automatic enrollment starts January 1st. Your district hires a new full-time person on 1-5 of 23. So that's the first day he's in a TRS covered position. That's the date that we need you to report for DB, the same as what's always been. Don't report when you make the higher offer the first day in the TRS covered position. So he starts then, and I'm on a bi-weekly or a semi-monthly payroll. Um, so I report him on um, the 1-1 one, one to one fifteen pay period with a pay date of one thirteen. I had a full day that day. I didn't get it posted until one sixteen. On one sixteen is when that person is coming to us in TRS and having an account generated. And at the same time, we're going to send that information to Voya and they're going to have an account generated. And that eligibility, it starts to be determined here and then also there. Neither of us can do anything before that. Like if the member calls and wants to enroll, <laughs> if they want to opt out, if they want to do anything, we don't have them. So until those accounts are generated, we they they don't really exist. So even though they started one five, to us we don't know and Voya does not know. So I do think that is a point, you know, that that lag time is going to be a little bit confusing. Um, so make sure they don't like on their first day call Voya. It's it's when you report them. Um, so it's sent to Voya, and um, he is identified as eligible for automatic enrollment. A PIN document and automatic enrollment notice are generated and mailed, and then his effective date is going to be two seventeen twenty three, which is the thirty days following the date he showed up in Voya system, which is that. Um, 116 is when he went there and then um he he his account takes a couple days to generate. So if he does nothing, um he's gonna get the reminder notice and we that would generate two three of 23 and be mailed. And then he does nothing again. Um either he's ignoring it or he's just fine with being automatically enrolled. On um, 2-17-13, that automatic enrollment effective date, he's enrolled and a confirmation is generated and mailed. Overnight, we're going to send you an SSP deferrals report that shows him enrolled at 3% with a contribution effective date of 
and a yes in the auto enroll column. So three one comes and you start deferring um, the 3% of his compensation on the 3 1 to 3 15 pay period with a pay date of 3 15. And you post that report the next day on 3 16. So that 90 days starts that 3 16 date when Voya gets that first contribution. So that means he has until 6 14 of 2023 to request a permissible withdrawal of all his deferrals, plus or minus any gains or losses or fees. And then, so that, that time starts, if he does nothing, he could either continue to contribute or he could have gone in and canceled his deferrals, but his deadline to request that um, permissible withdrawal expires on June 14th. So even though he was hired on 1-5 of 23, he's not really, his deferrals aren't starting till the pay period that begins on or after 3-1. And then his... Um, 90 days for his permissible withdrawal starts when that contribution is actually posted at FOIA. So we wanted to just kind of make that clear. It's it's a rather long timeline. And so for you guys to know what's coming next, we are um, working to update the, the communications. Um, the ones that we think you guys might wanna hand out um, to your members and the automatic enrollment guide are really close to being final. I actually think they're final. <laughs> um, so we're working on a communication to send those out to you. Um, we are, we do not require that you um, hand anything out to the members. We are definitely um, providing the, the communication via the mail that they have to have. Um, but we do know as their employer um, th that you want to have information. So we're going to have a new hire flyer and a plan highlights document for you to be able to hand out to just kind of say, here's what to expect. We, I know we just hired you. You can't do anything yet because we need to report you um, to TRS, but here's what to expect. And here's some information about the plan. Um, we'll get those out probably in the next week or so, but it'll definitely be prior to January 1. And then just, this is just a reminder of go live, even though it's January 1, um, their, auto, their automatic enrollment effective date isn't going to be till 30 days after they're reported. And that contribution effective date isn't going to be till the first of the month after that. So, and you don't have to remember any of this. <laughs> really what you need to remember is look for the SSP deferrals report and take the deferrals um, on their paycheck in accordance with the report and report them via Gemini. So, I gave a lot of information because I know people want it, but we really are taking care of the bulk of the communications, the identifying um, the eligibility, all of that stuff. So if you don't remember anything else, the SSP deferrals report, <laughs> everything will be contained on there. And then we, if we're definitely happy to help you if you haven't reported yet um, and you need to know how to report it's, it's, almost the same as the DB, except it's a lot less fields to ha have to fill in and a lot less edits um, just because it's less information. Um, there are resources that are available. Um, so Voya is, is basically handling the member side of things. So like I said, like TRS, even member services can't really do much. Um, we can't, we can only tell them to call Voya in the, for the most part. Um, and employer services obviously can't help the member with this. So if it's a if it's a participant question, they should go to Voya. Um, they have the um, website and call center. We do have um, information on the member facing website. We have a lot of information on the employer facing website. If you have any questions on employer reporting um, or a, any payments, so if a payment rejects anything like that, then we do have SSP accounting to contact for that. So, and then we also, um, you probably have heard from um, the local education reps, but we um, do have VOIA reps, three that cover the whole state, and there's multiple ways to get a hold of them. You can either contact them directly if they're your person um, and ask them to uh, explain the plan or um, come meet with your members, your employees. 
Um, you can have your employees schedule a virtual appointment um, one-on-one with the, it'll assign them based on county. Or um, we do have monthly webinars scheduled out through, um, we're, we're planning to do them at least throughout 2023. So if they, if you don't have a um, one for your specific district, there will be one a month that's available for people to join. Um, and we do a very high level overview of TRS. And then, um, and then Voya does a pretty, a more detailed um, um, webinar about, about the specific SSP. Um, and we do have a recording of one of those posted on our website as well. And there's a flyer available at the Voya website. So that is all that I have.